church. And uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want you to invite you to, uh, if you don't have a home church, I want to invite you to, uh, to come and see us, come visit with us, uh, where adults and children will be blessed. Also, I want to invite you to share your testimonies on how the Word is blessing you. And, and if you're watching this on YouTube or, or Facebook, you know, be sure to tag us or like us and let us know that you're being blessed by this. That way I know that you are receiving. If I don't hear from you, I'm wondering if you're really watching or listening to the service at all. Or should we be on the line or should we be here? Just let me know so we can continue to be blessed knowing that you are listening to what is being preached. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock and Wednesdays at 7.30. Office number, of course, is 770-957-9872. Now, I'm going to get into part two on uh, uh, having a righteousness consciousness. And, you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 34, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. The word awake means to become conscious, become conscious or aware of something. Let me read it this way. Awake and become conscious and aware of righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And Romans 1, 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from saving faith to grow in faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And again, righteousness means right standing, and holiness means right living. We talked about some benefits, and I'll go quickly because I'm going to get to this message. Uh, we talked about quickly what are the benefits of having a righteousness, consciousness. Number one, righteousness is connected to healing. Number two, when we uh, understand a righteousness, consciousness, it will produce boldness. Number three, it gives us confidence when we pray for a, a righteousness consciousness will cause every one of your prayers to work. Now, uh, number five, and in righteousness shall you be established. In righteousness shall you be established. Isaiah 54, 14, it says, in righteousness shall thou be established. Now, the Bible says in, in the Psalms, talking about a man that delights greatly in his commandments. His heart is established, trusting in the Lord. See, it's, tr it's easy to trust God when you understand righteousness, when you have a righteousness consciousness, when you know what God says, who God says you are. So put your trust totally in God and be established. Like a wise man, the Bible says in Matthew 7, 24, it says, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house on, I like to say it this way, that built his house on the rock, which is the hearing and the doing of the word of God. The rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew against the house that was hearing and doing the word of God. And the Bible said the same rain, the floods, wind blew upon the foolish man that built his house. Oh, he built a house, but he built his house on the hearing, but not doing the word of God. The rains descended, the floods came, the wind blew against the house that was hearing, but not doing the word of God. And the house fell because it was not established on the right foundation. The man that built his house on the rock, his house was built on the right foundation and it stood the test of time. The foolish man, he built his house, but it was not built on the right foundation. You know, to understand a righteousness consciousness will help you build your house on the right foundation. You know, but when you don't think much about yourself, you look down on yourself, you, you call yourself unworthy, unrighteous, get last week's message and listen to it. We explain more into that. God made you righteous and he made you worthy. You know, I've, uh, many, many years ago, um, uh, I, I wanted to, to, to write a song. And, and, uh, I, I didn't know how to write songs. And, uh, I mean, I'm a teenager when I write a song, I just couldn't. And, and, but when you have no knowledge of the Word of God, it's hard to really 
uh, write a song unless you know what you're talking about. And I wrote one song. It was it was a flop. <laughs> unworthy. It's called unworthy to walk in your footsteps. And uh, I meant well, but that song, uh, it hit the spot. It hit the spot. I named my trash can Spot. That's where I put it. The way, because I had no, until the time came that God gave me knowledge, gave me understanding of, of the things of God, and then God released that talent inside of me, so I became a, uh, became a songwriter. A a and so you got to have a righteousness, consciousness, to be a blessing to other people. You know, uh, you got to be, learn how to be established in the Word of God. And, and so God is always available to you to help you to reveal himself to you. God wants to reveal himself to you of who he really is. A lot of times people, they, they know about God, but they don't know God. They know about him. They heard about him. But when you know your God, the Bible said you will do exploits. They that know the God will do exploits. Find out who God is, what he has, what he can do. Then you know who you are, what you have, what you can do. First of all, having a righteousness consciousness, you'll be established. You'll be established in faith. You'll be established in health and all the blessing that God has for you. Number six, it causes having a righteousness consciousness it causes oppression, fear, and terror to be far from you. Isaiah 54, 14 says, You shall be far from oppression from and from terror, for it shall not come near you. See, when you understand righteousness, righteousness is having a right understanding you understand that you have right standing with God. Think about it. You have been approved of God. He made you one of his children. You are now a child of God. You've been born again. And God has blessed for you. Begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Begin to see yourself as an overcomer. Begin to see yourself the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Begin to see yourself blessed. Begin to say out of your mouth, everything my hand touch, I'm blessed. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your faith in his word. Trust him and have an inward consciousness of who you are. Know who you are. Know who you are in him, for in him you live and move and have your being. And then righteousness, consciousness, it'll cause oppression, fear, terror to be far from you. Number seven, righteousness, understanding righteousness, understanding of having a righteousness consciousness, it delivers you from trouble. It will deliver you from trouble. You know, Proverbs 11 verse 8 says, the righteous are delivered out of trouble. If you're in trouble, find out more about your righteousness. In righteousness, the righteous are delivered out of trouble. Oh yeah, you'll have you'll have trouble, you'll have tribulations. I'm not saying you'll never have trouble. I'm not saying you'll never have testings and you'll never have trials. The Bible says in the world you will have tribulations, testings and trials. You'll have times of darkness in your life. You have times of temptation. But when you understand righteousness, understanding and having a righteousness consciousness will deliver you out of all those troubles because when you are established in your righteousness, you know what to do. You have that boldness. You know exactly how to believe God. You know how to walk by faith. You know how to build your faith. You understand authority. And you understand with that boldness or delivered out of trouble, you have that boldness to resist the devil. He'll flee from you. But see, if you see yourself unworthy, no, no, no. In the natural, we are unworthy, but we don't use that term. Ah, no, I'm not unworthy. I was unworthy, but now I am the righteousness of God in him. You are the righteousness of God. You're not unworthy. You may feel unworthy, but you are. You call yourself worthy because God made you worthy. Amen. Number eight, it brings much wealth, rewards on earth. You know, um, righteousness. The Bible says there in Proverbs 15, verse 6, 
and the house of the righteous there is much treasure. In the house of the righteous there is much treasure. Now, when I think about treasure, I'm not just talking about money, honey. It'd be nice to have money. We all need income. But when you have uh, grandkids, that's treasure. Amen. Well, matter of fact, we have a granddaughter. That is her name, Treasure. That is her name, Treasure. We love that name. I remember when uh, our daughter, Dina, gave birth to uh, her little girl, Treasure, I called my mom in Oklahoma. I said, well, Mom, uh, Dina had her uh, baby. And, and she said, well, what she have? I said, she had a girl. And my mom said, well, what's her name? I said, well, Treasure. There's a, there's a complete blank. She didn't say a word. Understand, Treasure. I said, Mom, it'll grow on you. But now, now there's only, there's just Treasure. Matter of fact, it's a special name because when, when she went to school, I think she's the only one who had that name, Treasure. And, and so, and she is a treasure. But, but see, to have treasure in the household is when you have treasures, you have grandkids, great grandkids, when you have, uh, when you have all these, uh, blessings of, of, uh, that's prosperity. When you have prosperity, uh, uh, the righteous, when you understand righteousness, praise God, you have, uh, you have treasures, uh, in heaven. You, you have treasure, I mean, treasures in your household. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure to have the peace of God. When you understand that righteousness, consciousness, you're going to have peace. When you have righteousness, consciousness, you, your faith's going to work better. All the fruits of the Spirit, and, and you'll have joy. When you have a righteousness, consciousness, when you see yourself the way God sees you, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to have that joy unspeakable and full of glory. When you see yourself the way God sees you, and you, you have God's divine favor. You've been approved by God. You're going to have that peace, joy, long suffering, gentleness, goodness. I mean, all these things is treasures. You're going to have wealth. You're going to have financial blessings come to you because you understand seed planting, harvest time. You plant and it comes back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. I tell you what, God watches over his word to perform it. He brings treasures to you. And, and, and so when you're, when you're, when you are the righteous, favor comes. You have favor. Proverbs 14, 9. Among the righteous, there is favor. Among the righteous, there is favor. Psalms 5, 12. The Lord blesses the righteous with favor. He surrounds him as with a shield. So you have faithful favor. So that's the blessings of, uh, of righteousness, consciousness, and because you have all these things. And then 10, you will, he'll, it will, righteousness, consciousness will make you generous. What that means is Proverbs 21, 26, a righteous gives and does not spare. You can give freely because God takes care of your tomorrow. When you understand righteousness, consciousness, Knowing who God is in you, you are you become a giver. You you become generous and you're giving because you understand that yes, in the as far as uh, sinners, there's none righteous, no, not one. As far as sinners, all righteousness is as filthy rags. As far as sinners, they they not they're not righteous. But we are not sinners. Remember, you're not a sinner. You was an old sinner. You got saved by grace, but now you're no longer a sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Him. And within these righteousness, understanding of consciousness of righteousness, you have all these blessings. You'll be generous. You'll give freely. And, and, and through righteousness, as I said, you'll have joy. Proverbs 29, verse 6, the righteous sing and rejoice. The righteous sing and rejoice. Why does the righteous sing and rejoice? Well, many reasons. First of all, a righteousness means right standing with God. He has right standing with God. That makes you want to sing with joy and shout the victory. When all the blessings that you have. Another one, number 11, through righteousness, and that's it, through righteousness you have joy. Now, Isaiah 61 and verse 10 says, I will rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exalt 
leap for joy in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath wrapped me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. So, amen. Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reign by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So righteousness is a gift. So quit calling yourself unrighteous. Quit calling yourself unworthy. If you are, if you have his righteousness, then God made you and put you in right standing. He's also gave you a gift of righteousness and therefore he made you worthy. Worthy. Amen. Worthy is the Lord and greatly to be praised for which you receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. See, when you understand that you have that gift of righteousness, the Bible says you can reign on earth. Walk in your God-given authority. If you don't understand your righteousness, you don't walk in this God-given authority. If you think you're unworthy, you're not going to walk in this God-given authority. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So it's, it's very vital that we understand what righteousness means. It means you have right standing. So you can actually say, now you can't tell people this because they think you're crazy. Anyway, they think you're kind of weird anyway. I don't go around and say, hey, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. People don't understand that. But I'm telling you, according to the Word of God, I'm righteous. That means I have, I could say this instead of I'm righteous. I could say, hey, I've got right standing with God. Am I perfect? No. I'm going to heaven not on my score. I'm going to heaven on his score. He made me righteous. I didn't make myself righteous. Then, then there's, no, there's nothing good inside of me, but the thing that's good inside of me is God himself. He's inside of me. He took up my righteousness and gave me his righteousness. Amen. Now, Isaiah 54, 17. The righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. 2 Timothy 4, 8, him forth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. We're talking about having a righteousness consciousness. You know, let me read this to you. I wrote it down, but I'm going to read it to you. Better read than said. Let me read this to you. You know, True and perfect righteousness is not possible for man to obtain on his own. The standard is simple, too high. The standard is simple, it's too high. The good news is that the true righteousness is possible for mankind, but only through the cleansing of sin by Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have no ability to achieve righteousness in and of ourselves. But Christians possess the righteousness of Christ because God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is an amazing truth. On the cross, Jesus exchanged our sin for his perfect righteousness so that we can one day stand before God and, his, and he will not see our sin, but the holy righteousness of the Lord Jesus. This means that we are made righteous in the sight of God, that is that we are accepted as righteous and treated as righteous by God on account of what the Lord Jesus had done. He was made sin, we are made righteous. On the cross, Jesus was treated as if he was a sinner, though he was perfect, holy, pure, and we are treated as if we were righteous, though we are defiled on account of what the Lord Jesus has endured on our behalf 
we are treated as if we had entirely fulfilled the law of God and have never become exposed to its penalty. We have received this precious gift of righteousness from the God of all mercy and grace. That's why you can say you're righteous. You know, uh, the righteous, as I said, is bold as a lion. Therefore, you can come boldly into the throne of grace and make a request known unto God. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. For we are his workmen, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. See, by his righteousness, having a righteousness consciousness, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. That means God is still working on you. He ordained you. He ordained you to walk in them. What does it mean to ordain you? God ordained you. That means he equipped you. He furnished you for service or action to make ready. He prepared you. So we have been given God's righteousness, grace, and mercy for action. You are who God says you are. You belong to him. The Bible said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. See, you are a child of God now. You belong to God. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm your righteousness. You are not unworthy anymore because God said your righteousness is of him. You're not unworthy no more. So quit looking down on yourself. Don't listen to the devil that said that you're nobody. You are somebody. You're special the eyes of God. You have God's favor. Romans 4.18, the New Living Translation says, Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God has said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And notice in verse 19, and Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promised. In verse 22, And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded 24. It was recorded for our benefit, too assured us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So you're not, folks, you're not unworthy. God made you worthy. And and you say, well, uh, I mean, all I have to do is believe. Well, there's more than just believing. When there is true believing, there's action with the belief. You know, John three sixteen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Believing in God is not enough. You can believe you're going to heaven, there's no sign you're going to heaven. You can believe that Jesus is coming again. You can believe in God. You can believe in heaven. You can believe in the world. You can believe in all that stuff. You can believe in salvation. You can believe in God and still not go to heaven. You said, yes, you can because John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, you can believe in God. 
But John 1, 12 says, But as many as receive him gave them the privilege to become the sons of God. You can believe in God. That don't make you a Christian. More than going to uh, McDonald's makes you a Big Mac. Or driving to a garage makes you, you a car. So you must be born again in order to be saved. You can believe I have the keys of my car. I believe the keys of my car. I believe that I can get this key go to my car and get the car running and it'll take me home. What I believe is true. But until I act on what I believe, I'll still be standing here. I ain't going no place. I ain't driving no place in the car. I got to act on what I believe. Faith is acting on what you believe. God made you righteous. Act like it. How do you act like it? Start talking it. Start telling others that uh, you, you're not the same person you used to be. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus, and God has blessed you, and you have, God, you have this gift of righteousness. God will bless you. God will watch over you. So God will say that in his word that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So put your confidence, put your confidence in God. Don't give up on God because he hasn't given up on you. You know, the fruit of the righteous is much treasure, the Bible says. The righteous cry in the Lord heareth and will deliver them out of all the troubles. Romans 3.24 says you are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. These are some of the things of the benefits. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Amen. Blessings and the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Amen. For by grace through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. For by grace are you saved. So to have a righteousness consciousness means to understand who you are in Christ. I want to encourage you, if you're not in church someplace, get in church. Get in church. The Bible says in the last days, many shall fall by the wayside. Don't fall by the wayside. Don't, you, you need that home church. No matter where you go, you need that home church. If you attend a certain church you haven't been in a long time, get back. Get back. Let God be your shepherd. If he is your shepherd, he's going to tell you, get into the church. You need, you need those people. You need that congregation to be with you. Stay ready at all times because the hour comes when you think not. Jesus is coming soon. Right now, be in church, serve God, get back into running the race that has been set before you. I'm going to remind you that we love you. God bless you. We pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that's listening to this. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that they're blessed, that you'll give them revelation of who they are in you. Give them a righteousness, consciousness that they're somebody special. And Father, we love you. We thank you for what you've done today. In Jesus' name, until next time, amen. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.